Hi friends! Welcome back to the channel, and if you are new, hi! I'm Artsy from The Artsy Gamer. I make art, I play games, and I encourage others to do the same. Today I'm doing a review of the Serene City Builder bundle that's available on Steam at roughly $40 at the time of this recording. The fact that I pinged on the bundle itself enough to do a review is pretty big because I have said time and time again, I'm not the person that does reviews, and yet... What you can expect from my reviews in the future is that I want to focus on games that are perhaps not featured at the Nintendo Direct, or maybe they are just underrated games that have been out for a couple of years and are either featured in a bundle or it's something that I want to try on the Artsy Gamer and share with other people. Basically, these are going to be the games that you have in your library that you may want to play every couple of months but not feel too invested but want to know whether or not it's worth your time and your money. What attracted me to the Serene City Builder bundle was the fact that the five games that are in the bundle itself are so different from each other, from the sandboxy point-and-click elements to points derived from where certain assets are placed. This bundle has a wide variety of enjoyment where you just want to throw caution to the wind and build amazing structures or really consider your next move for the points that you earn for each level. I'm going to be ranking these games based on the following. Intuitiveness of gameplay. Replayability design, accessibility, and the length of gameplay. My final score will be provided at the end, but I will say, this is the TLDR by the way, that it is a decent bundle that's worth the purchase for those days that you want to be creative without much investment or having to devote hours and hours to grinding like an Animal Crossing New Horizons or a really in-depth storyline like Spiritfarer. In the bundle, there are five games, Islander, Townscaper, Cloud Gardens, Dwarf Romantic, and the block. Another fun tidbit is that if the whole of the bundle isn't for you or you prefer to play on the console, four of the five games, excluding the block, are available on the Nintendo Switch, and a couple are also available on the Xbox and PlayStation, so I'll be sure to leave the links of where you can find them on your preferred console in the description below. We're going to start at the top of the list with Islanders by Coatsync, a game dev team of three and can be best described as a minimalist strategy game and playable on the PC, Mac, and Linux. Published in 2019 and available for $5, this game is still receiving the random seasonal update that changes the building skins. There are two ways to play, point-based strategy in how you place your buildings, or creative mode if you want to design the island community of your dreams. The tutorial was pretty easy to follow, but it also thrusts you into the thick of it, starting on a really small island and providing assets for you to place and earn points. Certain buildings can earn you more points depending on which other buildings you place nearby or hinder your final score. What I loved about this game was how incredibly colorful and unique the building designs were for each level. It has a lovely blocky design that just screams whimsy to me, and I was incredibly amused by the Valentine's Day building skins that had heart balloons and a neon light of two lovebirds for the chapel. One thing I did struggle with and I fully acknowledge was pretty much a user problem and not a game problem was I had a hard time placing the platforms to increase the building space. I think I just need to tinker around with the mechanics of the game itself, but I rank this game particularly high in the bundle. The playability for Islanders is incredibly high. There are a plethora of levels featuring so many different islands and you have the choice to simply throw caution to the wind and design beautifully laid out islands without worrying about points. There's no win or lose, it's whether or not you accumulate enough points to progress to the next level. You can stay on an island for as long as you want, and gameplay can vary from anywhere between 15 minutes to about an hour, perfect for those lull moments to soothe that active mind without diving deep into a story-driven game with consequences. I give this game a solid 4 out of 5, mostly because of the lacking intuitiveness of where to find information for specific gameplay controls, but again, I think that was mostly a me problem instead of a game problem. The next game in the bundle is Townscaper for $4, a quaint town building game in the middle of the ocean that has no gameplay, no in-game goals. Just point and build to your heart's content. That's it. That's the game. Published in 2021 by Raw Fury and playable on the PC and Mac, I had purchased the game the same year it was released, played a couple of hours, and there it sat in my Steam library collecting dust until I saw the bundle. 
So fun fact, it's also available to play for free on your web browser if you want to try it out. Now, just because I've only played it once years ago doesn't mean Townscaper is a bad game, quite the opposite. This game thrusts you into a literal puddle where you just click and click and build this remote town as large or small or tall as you want. The ingenuity of the buildings is very similar to how the Spiritfarer boat homes alter with their shapes, only this game takes it to a whole new level. Depending on where you use your different color buildings to connect to each other or create buildings off the ground, each building breathes a whole new personality in the overall design. What I love about Townscaper isn't necessarily its replayability value because you can create infinite cities that are unique. Instead, I consider it an incredible tool for world building and other creative endeavors. Imagine creating whole 3D maps for RPG campaigns, or creating towns for background designs in comics or illustrations, or if you are a visual person needing references for your book. This game allows for you to apply to other creative passions, which is something that I have ranked really highly in games. The ambiance is very quiet, the sounds of water drops as your buildings bloop into existence, it allows for something to be creative without overthinking it. Similar to Islanders, it's that game to sit with for 15 minutes to hours, depending on what you decide to put into it, and you can save and export your progress to use in other software. I'd rank Townscaper a solid 5 out of 5 for its ingenuity in the potential of how it can be used in other creative means. I would love to see Townscaper be a little bit less random with the types of buildings that are placed and perhaps have a right-click capability for specific building designs, but you know, that's just me. I, I want it all. Next, we have Cloud Gardens, created by Noyo in 2021 and the most expensive game in the bundle for $18. Now, I personally feel that this game may be a misnomer in being described as a city building game because it's more like asset building, but the structures do become more intricate at each level. Available to play on the PC and Mac, the goal for the game is to create small plant-covered dioramas of urban decay and manufactured landscapes. So uh, my post-apocalyptic besties with your tetanus and your trash and your rust, this game is 100% for you. Like Islanders, there is a point-based puzzle game for each level, in which you place items near plant seeds for them to reclaim. You can move around the assets at will to improve your score and make it more aesthetically pleasing in the balance of the nature and the manufactured. This game the game's replayability is also incredibly high, and the feel of it unique and beautifully designed in lo-fi graphics. What had me super excited for this game was similar to Townscaper. These assets could be used for other creative means in setting the tone in RPGs, illustrations, and the like. You can devote, again, 30 minutes to play and be happy with it. Unfortunately, this was the game that I struggled with the most for gameplay and accessibility. As beautiful as the ambiance is, the assets used for each level becomes repetitive and starts to look really busy with the same things used. In the back of my mind as I was playing a level, I thought, wow, that's a, that's a lot of signage for one single structure. And granted, in the later levels, it opens more options to use, but in the goal to find balance between the nature and the manufactured, the levels become busy really quickly, and I wasn't really sure how to develop a surefire strategy and plant placement. The other issue I had was vision and creative mode. I checked the options for gameplay over and over and I couldn't find a way to lessen the cloudiness. And now I love a good foggy day, don't get me wrong, but it made it hard for me to even see what I was working on. The other issue is that the creative mode didn't really have a foundation to build off of, or maybe this was a user issue and I didn't realize you needed to build it first. So placing items were kind of chaotic. So I rank Cloud Gardens a 3 out of 5 for its lacking intuitiveness for gameplay, especially for how much it costs, but I did enjoy the game enough to go back and try again and see if there was more of a strategy that went into plant placement and or creative mode, and it was, and I had a much more enjoyable time. Okay, so I'm going to be super duper real with you and tell you that Dwarf Romantic is my favorite game in this bundle and that you should get it even if you decide the whole bundle isn't for you. The second most expensive game in the bundle at $14, it's truly worth the price tag. Published in 2022 by Tucana Interactive, it's available on the PC and holy moly is it a good game. Dwarf Romantic is a building strategy and puzzle game in which you place tiles to create cohesive and idyllic village landscapes. You start with a stack of tiles and you draw from the top of the stack, place it on the available slot and rotate it to the best fit. 
The goal is to accumulate a certain amount of points and create groups and combinations of landscapes such as forests, villages, or bodies of water. To me, it feels like an eboard game that has a similar vibe to Cascadia or uh, Wingspan or Settlers of Catan without the uh, backstabbing or friendship ending tendencies of, of Settlers of Catan. A truly beautiful game with interactive gameplay, it's as competitive as you want it to be and perfect for those one-offs when your usual favorites are not calling to you. It's the game I didn't feel particularly good at in the beginning, but it's the game that I want to be good at. One of the only issues that I had with the game was the tile stack in the bottom right corner. I had this trigger happy left mouse click for some reason in this game and tended to accidentally place tiles right next to the stack, but there is an undo option so the consequences are rather low. Replayability for this game is again incredibly high and any gamer at any level will find enjoyment in this game. Dwarf Romantic is also that game where you can immerse yourself in for over an hour, wonder where the time went, and felt it was time well spent. Basically get this game. A solid 5 out of 5. You need to get it. Today. We're ending our review of the bundle with The Block, the cheapest game in the bundle at $3. Published by Future Friends Games in 2022 and playable on the PC and Mac, The Block is described as the world's smallest city builder and created by a single game dev, Paul Schnepf, who was also on the Islanders dev team. What I loved most about how this game was described, it's very clear that Paul knows what sort of game The Block is. Ranging from designing on an extra small 3x3 tile to an extra large 15x15 15 tile, he describes the ambiance of his game as one that offers foreground quiet and unfussy tinkering. With a selection of tiles from blank spaces to small trees to large towers, you can create a delightful town in literal minutes. Similar to Townscaper, you can devote however long you want to a build and call it. The replay value is infinite, but I will say I did hope for more in gameplay. But that's not the block. That's not the point of it. So instead of me describing that as a negative to the game, I just acknowledge that this game isn't for me personally. I do think the block has an end to being a successful mobile game for people who want to be proactive in a low stress sort of way while waiting for an appointment or maybe being on public transportation. And I also think that this game would be a great introduction for young kids to video games. So while this was the game in the bundle that flopped for me, I do find value in it being included in the bundle itself. My only true criticisms of the game revolved around the color schemes for the tiles and assets and the constant clicking to get to the specific tile you wanted. The colors were a little too similar and rather saturated, which may prove an issue for those who are vision impaired with color blindness specifically, or who struggle with eye strain. And there's no pattern to which asset type that you click through, so unless you just like placing things and seeing what comes up, it becomes really tedious after a while. All in all, I give it a 4 out of 5. An impressive game that Paul put a lot of unfussy tinkering to give us that foreground quiet that we all crave. In my personal humble opinion, the Serene City Builder bundle is absolutely worth the purchasing, mostly because the games vary in price and gameplay and the amount of time and investment that you can put into it and be happy with the result. Of the five, Islanders and Dwarf Romantic were the top two that I really enjoyed playing. I've actually gone back and tried improving my scores for both games, and I definitely feel that those are the games that I want to go to when my grinding games in Animal Crossing, Spiritfarer, or you know, if I want to get into The Sims, it's just not calling to me. I realized that as much as I really appreciated that the games have that sandboxy creative mode to it, I really do prefer having games that focus on points and strategy. But if you are somebody that just likes to design things and let your mind wander while you point and click and create, all of these games have so much merit that I highly recommend. Townscaper, Cloud Gardens, and The Block are those games that I definitely will be using for giving me inspiration that is outside of the gameplay itself, because I love the notion that games can be used for other creative means. And, you know, I'm a nerd. I like playing D&D &D and other RPGs. So having these games that really breathe life into the background of what we're doing is going to be an incredible tool for my game group. The other reason why I love those three games is because you can really just devote 15 minutes and you would be happy with the result. You can play with it for a little bit and then put it away for months or years and then pick it back up when the mood strikes. I would rank the bundle a solid 7 out of 10, mostly because three of the five games are not going to be games that I will pick up regularly and the issues that I had with Cloudscaper, especially with the price, really did hinder the final score. Other than that, 
solid games for the price with low stress, no consequences, and for that hour that you want to be creative but not invested. I would love to hear in the comments if there is a specific game in the bundle that you really sparked on or if you're planning on getting the bundle itself. As always, if you haven't liked the video, please do so. It really helps me out. And if you want to receive notifications of when I'm live or when I've posted a video, hit subscribe. Get notifications. I'm pretty awesome. Just letting you know. And with that, friends, I'll catch you next time. Bye!